45 years ago, arguably the greatest achievement of all mankind took place. It was Apollo 11 that would take Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin to the moon on July 20th of 1969. Now, while I could try and describe how awesome Apollo 11 was, I figured I'd rather just let the archival footage tell the story and speak for itself, and I'll let Walter Cronkite do all the talking, and I'll interject wherever I can. Here from CBS News Apollo headquarters at Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning. It's T minus one hour, 29 minutes, and 53 seconds and counting in just an hour and a half. If all goes well, Apollo 11 astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are to lift off from Plan 39A out there on the voyage man always has dreamed about. Next stop for them, the moon. And many things will never be the same again. For in addition to the mission the three astronauts will perform and the experiments they'll undertake, the samples they'll bring back, these men will carry with them many other things. Many things that are not so nearly so easy to describe. There is the spirit of such men as Marco Polo and Columbus and Lindbergh, the dreams of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, the vision of Kepler and Galileo, and the skill of Shepard, Glenn, Shira, Gagarin, Titoff, and all the others. They'll carry thoughts of the moon goddess Diana, and uh, I suppose of green cheese. And boring through the vastness, the blackness, and the cold of space, they'll carry the pledge made eight years ago by President Kennedy to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely in this decade. And with that, the stage was set for the launch on July 16th of 1969. And I want you to keep in mind a few things. First, keep in mind that this is essentially a 35 story tall skyscraper that's about to move vertically. Obviously, that's gonna take a lot of power and a lot of fuel. And as I mentioned in my very first episode of the air show, the Saturn V got roughly around 4.9 inches to the gallon. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Six, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Boy, it looks good, Wally. Four days later, and nearly a quarter of a million miles away, the stage was set on July 20th of 1969 for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to make world history. 60 seconds. Lights on. Forward. Forward. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Straight shadow. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. landed. 
Roger, twin tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Ooh. Oh, boy. Thank you. You're wow. looking good here. Mm. What? <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. Very fine. Boy, look at those pictures. Wow. It's a little shadowy, but uh, he said he expected that in the shadow of the lunar module. Armstrong is on the moon. Yeah, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. His quote was, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. With the astronauts safely within the Sea of Tranquility and with the American flag firmly planted in place, it was then time for the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, to make the world's most expensive long-distance phone call. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure that they too join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity and and with the vision for the future. Two Americans who landed and walked on the moon took the first and most dangerous steps on the voyage home. Never had anything blasted into orbit from the moon's surface, but Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in their Ego lunar module succeeded. If they had failed, it would have meant certain death. Finally, it was time for re-entry, and I want you to keep in mind a few numbers. First, keep in mind that the outside temperature of the Apollo Command Module would reach nearly 3 to 5,000 degrees, and that this would be traveling at a terminal velocity of 36,000 feet per second, which is roughly 24,500 miles per hour. Apollo 11, uh, Houston through Orion. Apollo 11 is back from the moon, safe and sound. The crew is just reported to Air Boss as they rest in their command module there on the surface of the Pacific, that they're in fine shape aboard the aircraft carrier Hornet. Uh, President Nixon was waiting to greet the returned astronauts. Man's dream and a nation's pledge have now been fulfilled. The date's now indelible. It's going to be remembered as long as man survives. July 20th, 1969, the day man reached and walked on the moon. The least of us is improved by the things done by the best of us, because if we are not able to land, at least we are able to uh, follow. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are the best of us, and they've led us further and higher than we ever imagined 
we were likely to go.